Jelly, love the video, very fascinating. Could you do one on what knights would look like? Well, um, Alexander Stennett? No, I can't. You see, the thing is, we know quite a lot about knights. Uh, knights spanned over, over a long period of time, a period that has been recorded fairly well, and, and you know, we have quite a lot of findings about them. We are pretty clear on what knights look like. But the thing is, what knights looked like changed a lot over time. And we know how they changed over time, and it would also change based on the country that you live in. So the thing is, for me to explain to you what a knight would look like, it would vary an awful lot depending on on where the knight comes from and what time he lives in. So, no, I cannot tell you what a knight would look like, but I can, and I will, give you a quick, let's say, overview on what knights would generally wear in terms of equipment based on time period. So this, these are not these are not definite facts like they would per se wear this but they would wear something around this but it, it would vary a little bit depending on, on where they're from. So join me in my quest and and and, and learn about 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 knights. Now, the concept of the knight didn't just, you know, spring out of the ground all of a sudden. Um, what knights are and, and how they came to be, what, what we know them as, it developed over time. But that's, that's, um, that's, a, that's a lot of, of explaining, like a lot of backstory that is really, it's possibly a topic for another video, but it's really not important now. What the earliest concept of what people would uh, these days call a knight would have originated somewhere during the 11th century, a little less than 100 years before uh, the First Crusade, which started, uh, if, I, if I'm correct, in the year 1095. In the 11th century, knights would wear hauberks, riveted male hauberks, that covered their upper arms and their upper legs, but it would leave their shins and part of their forearm exposed. They would also wear a male coif, and their helmet would most likely be a nasal helmet. Just to clarify, our knight is a mounted unit, and in terms of weapons, he would use a spear as his primary weapon, and he would have a sword as a backup weapon in a scabbard on a belt that he would wear around his waist, not on his hips like we do today. He would also carry a kite shield, and his shoes would be leather and quite simple and lame, having no heel, um, pretty much offering no support. Shoes these days kind of sucked, to be honest. Now something that's important to mention is that, um, as you guys would probably know, knight, the term knight, eventually became an honorary title. Uh, right, so this happened somewhere during the, the 11th, 12th century that knight became an honorary title rather than a military one. And a new term was used to describe uh, the military fully armored mounted unit. And this term, you might have heard of it, is called men at arms. Now, men at arms is used a lot and it's used a lot in the wrong way. Many people believe that a man at arms is just a common foot soldier, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Actually, a man at arms is the elite. A man-at-arms was a fully armored, mounted soldier. They were the heavy cavalry. Now again, what the equipment was depended on time period and where you're from. But in any case, you know, being nobility and a man-at-arms kind of connected because you had to, you had to afford all of your own equipment and a horse. So a poor guy is probably not going to be able to afford all of that. So a poor guy wouldn't be a man-at-arms. Most knights you would see on the battlefield were man-at-arms, but not all man-at-arms were knights, because a knight is a title and a man-at-arms is a military um, name, a unit name. So a more accurate title of this video would be, what would man-at-arms really look like? So from now on I'm gonna address these guys as man-at-arms. Fast forward to the 12th century, their main form of armor would still be male, but it would be longer. The male would now cover their entire legs and their feet, also the entirety of the arms and hands, forming little mittens around the hands. Also around these times, the first versions of the Great Helm would have been developed, but the Nasal Helm was still very popular. And as people became more and more covered in armor, their shields gradually became smaller. 
eventually turning into the heater shield, which is basically a small guide shield. Another hundred years pass, going to the 13th century. The brigandine has come to Europe and people slowly and steadily started adding small parts of plate to their armor. During the 14th century, you can see a very clear mix of mail and plate. But it wouldn't be until the 15th century that people would actually encase their entire bodies in plate armor. And this would be around the time that you would truly see the knight as people envision it. Again, what plate armor looked like depended on where you're from. Like in Germany you had the gothic plate armor and in, in Italy you had um, the very iconic uh, asymmetrical pauldrons. But at this point in time, our men-at-arms would be pretty much completely encased in iron. At this point, if they still carry a shield, it would probably be a very small shield to accompany a lance on horseback. Otherwise, they would wear pole arms like pole axes and have a sword, mace or hammer as backup weapon. The favorite helmet also shifted from the nasal helmet to the sallet. Even later, during the 16th century, the more quote-unquote traditional knight helmets uh, pop their heads around the corner, like the armored and the burgonet. But their equipment in terms of weapons stayed relatively the same. They would have different pole arms, different shaped pole arms, but in the end, in terms of functionality, it wouldn't change all that much. And after this point, slowly but steadily, um, the knight's armor went away. It uh, ceased to exist. Now, for a long time, both guns and men-at-arms were used together on the battlefield. It's not that, that the existence of guns rendered armor completely obsolete like people tend to think. No, armor proved that it could stop bullets occasionally. However, eventually people figured out that it would be cheaper and overall more effective to arm a bunch of people with guns than just a few people with uh, full plate armor and horses. So eventually the knight or men at arms as we know it as we as we know and love them they cease to be but that's about what they would look like based on time period so if you stuck around this long you might as well subscribe and also follow me on social media links are in the description below and thank you for joining my quest and i hope you'll join me in the next one bye guys